Welcome to Introducing Effects in Delphi and C++ Builder with FireMonkey. To start, we're going to have a look at a very interesting example of a user interface. A good user interface guides the eye where it needs to be. And if we start typing here, network, we can see that the elements that are not relevant are almost kind of taken away from us a little bit whereas the things that may be relevant are highlighted to draw the eye to the appropriate parts of the screen. As we find a perfect match, we get a very loud indication that we found the element that we may well be looking for. Using this principle, let's have a look at the effects and how we can use them within FireMonkey. So we're going to start in Delphi and we'll finish off having a look at adding a new effect into an application using C++ Builder. So this example application here has a team menu, we've got a, a layout with a rectangle in it and then over on the right here we've got a lined right, another layout with a clearing edit inside it. And we can see that if we have a look in the structure here we can see that this layout has a reflection running on it, which we can see over here on the right hand side. We're able to change the length of that reflection, so we can change that up to 1, so it gives a full reflection. We'll move it down to, say, 0.4, so it's only 0.4, 40% of the above is reflected down. We can change the opacity, so it can be quite a strong reflection or quite a subtle reflection. We're also able to set a trigger for the reflection to fire if we wanted to um, manually enable the reflection on certain types of events. So, looking at the UI example we saw earlier, let's have a look at what events we've got firing here to make this demo app do stuff. So, there's an on key up event. If we go in here, we can see that we've got a, a property checking to see if we have a search band manager. And search band manager is uh, just a, a management class that I wrote to help with this demo. And uh, we just check that that's been initialized, which it should do by the point we've got here. And as long as it's been initialized, then we're setting the text search of the search band manager to be the property passed in. So let's go ahead and have a look at what that does. So this search band manager is basically, it has a, an object list of T search bands. And as we set the, uh, the search here, it's just going through each search band and then telling the search band to set its text search. So if we then come down here, the text search goes through each search item and tells it to set to its text search. And then each search item is then going through and running a little bit of code to check what state it's in. So if there's a value passed in, if there's no value passed in, then its search state is none, there's no search been asked. If there is um, a value passed in, if it doesn't match anything within the list of search options then it gets a no match otherwise if it's found within the list of search options 100% we get a full match otherwise it becomes a partial match so that state option if we go and have a look at state we can see that's got a setter here and for setting the state we're then updating the opacity depending if there's a search underway or not if there's no search, then we set the opacity to 1, so we want to see that completely, remove any glow effects and the background colour that we've got for our fully found um, option. If there's uh, no match, uh, it means we're doing a search, so drop the opacity down, because we don't want that to be so visible. However, if there's, if there's a partial or a full match, make sure the opacity is up at 1 and enable specific glow effects around what we're doing. So nice easy code. If we go and run that, 
I've actually got this targeting out to the Mac at the moment. So let's just minimize my VM. And here we can see the search program. If we type in clock, we can see now we have very similar functionality to that we saw earlier. Um, but equally, we could carry on for clocking and find something else that matched. And um, one of the little things that we notice here, we get nice round corners on the edit controls, which is very Mac in its orientation. We also have the Use OS menu option enabled for, this, for the main menu, so the options, instead of appearing in the application, appear up at the top here. And if we just come back to Windows, if we just choose our targets to be Windows here, and run this application, we can see here that we now have a Windows look and feel with the square rounded corners and the menus in line rather than up in you know, the context menu at the top. But we still have the same functionality working in our Windows application. Without any different code, everything's the same. So just to finish off, let's have a look at uh, Here's a project that I've just started putting together in C++. So we've just gone File, New, Find Monkey HD Application for C++ Builder. And we've simply added uh, an edit, a label, a button, and a list box. And I'm just going to remove the glow effect for a moment. And if we uh, have a look at the on-click event, we can see we have uh, an edit we're checking if the, the data value passed into the edit box is more than nothing, and if so, we add it to the list box items. Now, we can improve the usability of this application here. If we have a look at the design, by having a glow effect around the enter town. So we're going to pop our, if we search for glow, we can see that we've got two types of glow effect, an inner glow and a standard glow effect. Now if we take this glow effect and we can just drag it using the structure here to the edit and that's now saying hey come and use this. What we can do is uh, let's just uh, give this a nice striking colour. So let's go with the uh, you know, hot pink here and we'll disable this. We can just update the effect to be visible or not depending on if the users actually entered a value. So we could say glow effect one enabled equals and then we want to say edit one text equals nothing. So if there's nothing in the text property then make sure the effect is enabled otherwise it will be disabled. So if we run this application now and we try to add to the list, we're going to get the glow effect saying you need to enter a value. However, if we now go and enter London and hit add to list, it now removes the glow effect as the data has been entered properly.